Welcome back, everyone. Great to be here with you. Looking forward to getting into today's topic, which was by popular request. Now, I haven't done a lot of virus update-based podcasts and shows for some time now. And as I've said before, the reason is that what I've had to say has been said. So I've given you all the information previous to this on COVID tongue, on uh, even the long hauler symptoms that we're going to be talking about here here today and what's called post-COVID syndrome. It actually goes by many different names, but I'll give you the symptoms and see if you may be suffering from it or someone that you know, or I know there's a lot of practitioners listening right now, so maybe it's someone in your practice. And there actually seems to be quite a number of people, so that's why I wanted to go through today's show. So let's get right into it. Remember, as you know, I am completely unbiased when it comes to helping people get well, transform their bodies, live longer, stronger. I honestly don't necessarily care who's right. I've always said that many, many times. And if one day there is some miracle pill that's invented, I'll recommend that as well. That miracle pill has not been invented yet, no matter what people say. Uh, There's always side effects to the conventional medicine drugs that are used. Now, sometimes they're absolutely needed in acute-based circumstances, and this virus can be one of them. So if someone gets very severe symptoms, they need to be hospitalized, I've recommended before the eye mask-based protocol. Now remember, before I go on, I have to state that I am not a licensed medical doctor. If you are looking for medical-based advice, I will not share that with you on today's podcast. However, what we do is we actually look at the underlying root causes for why these things come to fruition, right? So if you want to actually get well and overcome overcome chronic-based dis-ease in the body, just remember that medical doctors and conventional medicine has absolutely no answer for you unless you want to take pharmaceutical drugs to mask those symptoms for the rest of your life and then go from one drug onto the next drug onto the next drug to keep dealing with all the different symptoms since you never eradicated the root cause in the first place. So what we deal with is actual root cause so that you can get well, they can live a life full of energy and ambition and drive and zest and vitality. That's what we want for you. So one of the issues is that conventional medicine has no idea what causes long hauler symptoms or post-COVID syndrome. So exactly what is it? Well, it's when you are overcoming the initial fever or headaches or nausea or joint aches or difficulty breathing, whatever COVID-based symptoms you had, okay, what can be left with is brain fog, debilitating fatigue, Hair loss is another big one. I'm going to do a whole show dedicated to hair loss from COVID. Uh, Inflammation in your body, exercise intolerance, everything around fatigue and exhaustion and low mood and depression from getting this particular virus. Now, conventional medicine has no idea why this is happening. They have no idea what this post-COVID syndrome is except for giving it a name, right? Like post-COVID syndrome or long hauler syndrome or whatever you prefer to call it. But again, all we do by give it a name is to give it life, right? That's it. We give it a name, but really what is it? It's a collection of symptoms. You're tired all the time in both body and mind right? Your mind's exhausted. So what is it? Well, it's low mood, overwhelmed, irritable, body's exhausted. So what does it mean? Well, tired, fatigued, and also poor exercise or poor stress tolerance. That means you don't deal very well with an extra stressor added to your body. So you're not dealing as well, maybe with a previous exercise program or even doing what your typical daily activities were. Well, conventional medicine may not have an answer, but the good news is natural health, natural medicine does. And the reason is that this post-COVID syndrome is not radically different from what we've seen before due to other viruses. It's just for whatever reason, conventional medicine can't make that connection. Again, it's like it's always based on one particular thing and one pill for every ill, right? So here's what we do know. And this is what it looks like. And actually, I debated going back and forth. I'm like, how technical should I get with this show? And the truth is, me getting super technical and going with all the different like names now that we're giving things, it just doesn't do anybody any good. And so that's not what the show is all about. This show is about helping real people overcome real health issues. So here's what we know. This post-COVID syndrome, this long hauler syndrome or long hauler symptoms is the exact same thing as people suffering from long hauler 
Epstein-Barr virus, long hauler mononucleosis, long hauler cytomegalovirus, CMV, okay? Others, herpes-based viruses. A lot of other people end up with the same fatigue and brain fog and never overcome it. And then what do we then label those people as? We label them as CFS, right? Chronic fatigue syndrome. Or we label them as myalgic encephalomyelitis. I've talked about this before on the podcast, right? I can link up those previous shows today. All the notes today will be at stephencabral.com forward slash 2148. However, any protocols that I may suggest cannot be linked there except for labs. And the reason is the FDA and FTC do not allow that. So again, we play by the rules, but I'll share with you how to find those. Okay, so if we know that this has happened before, we know that it's happened from other previous viruses, we know that it's then labeled as chronic fatigue syndrome or myalgic encephalomyelitis, which is a more appropriate medical-based terms, what does that mean? Well, it means that people get exhausted in both body and mind because their body fought off an infection and they are left still with all of the inflammation, right? So your body is still inflamed. The tissues in your body are still inflamed. That inflammation is almost like if you've ever dealt with allergies before, like during an allergy season. Typically, people that are dealing with allergies are exhausted. And that's because their body is inflamed systemically with all of those histamines and cytokines. It's fighting off the outside world. Well, what can happen is after a virus, you can build up enough antibodies to destroy the antigen, which would be the virus itself, right? So your body creates antibodies, and then it creates all these, well, we won't go too deep into it, but T cells and B cells, and it's creating antibodies to fight off the uh, virus. And then it does, which is great, or it puts it into remission, like with an Epstein virus or, or another type of virus. Okay, so that happens. But what you can be left with is then the aftermath, think of it, the aftermath of a battle, the aftermath, aftermath of a war, right? Think about what happens. Well, you have so much of the actual land or buildings or whatever it might be decimated, right? And your body needs to rebuild. So think about it. Instead of buildings or land or whatever it might be, what do you need to do? Well, you need to rebuild the cells. And that's because the cells themselves contain mitochondria. And the mitochondria, under stress and inflammation, actually die themselves. So again, I decided, I was trying to figure out how deep do I want to get in this? Here's what I want you to think about it. Inside all of your cells, think about it this way, not all are affected, but you've got about 30, 40 trillion cells in your body. Okay. So we've got a certain number of cells, especially in the muscles that contain hundreds, if not more mitochondria for each cell. Now, think about many of those mitochondria being damaged. Think about half of them being damaged. Inflammation itself, believe it or not, can cause those mitochondria to swell and then actually their cell membranes explode. So their cell membranes break down. Now you're left with less mitochondria. If you have less mitochondria in your cells, what happens? You produce less ATP. That's adenosine triphosphate. What's adenosine triphosphate? That is your body's ability to make energy, especially even short-term energy. Think about just walking up a couple flights of stairs, maybe to your bedroom or something like that. You may no longer have the same energy by the time you get to the top of those stairs. Why? You need to use ATP in the largest amount of muscle in your body, which is in your legs. And you don't have as much mitochondria to produce that ATP, which then what happens? Well, now you create more inflammation, right? So it's a vicious cycle. I was talking about this with the integrative health practitioners the other day, that if you have inflammation, it destroys a lot of the mitochondria. And if you don't have enough mitochondria, it allows for more inflammation. So it's this vicious cycle, which is why it's so difficult for people to get out of. And that is where people get stuck with myalgic encephalomyelitis, chronic fatigue syndrome, fibromyalgia, and long hauler symptoms for months, sometimes even longer. But the good news is all of this can be overcome. I had Addison's disease, which is chronic fatigue taken to the highest level where it's actually diagnosed where your body's not producing cortisol. And I had myalgic encephalomyelitis, which is basically flu-like symptoms. You feel like a zombie all day long. I overcame both of those. I no longer have those. I have more energy for the most part than I know what to do with. And I know that you can overcome it as well. It is not necessarily simple, but you can do it. That's, that's the thing is like, there is no one pill. 
But that's the thing is like your body is not going to respond to one pill and anything. So don't let conventional medicine fool you. The good news is we know how to do it. It's going to take a little bit of work. But on the other side, you'll be able to have the energy back, the good mood, all those things that you want. So I just want to explain one more part before we get into the actual protocol that we use. So here's what I want you to understand. That when you're dealing with the virus and your body's ramping up the immune system, this could be anything. It could be allergies. It could be autoimmune, whatever it is. Your body's under stress, okay? You might have a lot of stress in regular life, work, relationships, et cetera. But when you're fighting off something, you have a greater amount of stress in the body. Okay, when you have a greater amount of stress in the body, typically your body's producing then more cortisol as an anti-inflammatory and as a uh, what's called a glucocorticoid. So that means that it produces, it tries to break down stored glycogen that's in your body, your liver, your muscles, to actually use for a fuel source. And you typically are doing that during a virus, and no matter what the keto people tell you. And the reason is that you're, if you look at your heart rate, like if you're wearing an aura ring or something, well, you're like, oh, wow, my heart rate's an extra 10 beats uh, per minute higher than it is uh, at night than it typically is. And then during the day, it's an extra 10. Okay. So your body is in more of that sympathetic nervous system-based mode. It has a battle to fight for your body and it needs to win. Okay. That's a stressor. It's going to take some level of glycogen from your body. All right. So cortisol is needed for that. Now, cortisol will ramp up as appropriate as long as the body is healthy and working. And it's also a great anti-inflammatory to a degree, right? It becomes too much, then we have bad news. We have more tissue breakdown, which can happen as well. So then though, after time, your body becomes exhausted from continuing to fight, fight, and fight. Now what's called a dysfunctional uh, HPA axis. So it's a hypothalamus telling the pituitary gland, telling the adrenals what to do. And you start to produce less and less cortisol, especially in the early morning. So you feel like a zombie in the early morning. You feel like you have brain fog and fatigue and like you never wake up, even with a cup of coffee, right? So here's what happens. Over time, that becomes dysfunctional, that HPA axis. You don't produce as much cortisol, which means you don't produce as much anti-inflammatory naturally. Right? So we need to fix all of this. Again, we know in functional medicine, integrative health, how to do this. Conventional medicine doesn't do this because they only test blood work. They only test lab work. That's it. That's what you were taught in medical school. And again, I'm not against conventional medicine. I'm just against it for uh, chronic-based care, right? I'm all for it in terms of acute-based care. If you're in the emergency room, listen, I want the best of the best for myself, my family, for everybody else. So acute-based care, best in the world, all right? Convention, uh, for chronic-based care, no, all you're going to do is mask the symptoms. That's it. So what are you going to do? Well, you're going to give someone some type of uh, norepinephrine or you know something to boost them, or you're going to give them a corticosteroid to decrease inflammation. None of these things are good in the long term. They're all short-term fixes. That's it. So what I want to do is help you in the long term. So let's get into it. All right. So the first thing you want to do is figure out what were your imbalances? Well, what are your imbalances now? And maybe what they were before you got long haul syndrome, since it seems to be that there was most people who get this, they were pretty close to overflowing their rain barrel. If you don't know what a rain barrel is, I can't go through that today. I'll link up a podcast on the rain barrel effect. And then I highly recommend getting a free copy of my book at stephencabral.com to really go through this. Because what happens is things are happening under the surface that you don't can't necessarily see. Inflammation is happening from gut-based issues, heavy metals, other viruses that you might be dealing with, like EBV from like 80 to 90% of people have EBV in, in some way uh, that may be out of remission. But it begins to fill up that rain barrel, right? Pesticides are exposed to, et cetera. So then we get this virus and it's a big one. And then all of a sudden, what? Well, then we get inflamed, right? And then that inflammation is just too much because we've already been filling up that rain barrel, right? So now it's our job to figure out, well, what were our underlying issues before root causes and balances? And what are they now, right? And the best way to do that is by running what's called the big five. The big five is going to look at your hormones, estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, DHEA. DHEA is a marker of immunity, Okay, cortisol, it's going to look at that morning, lunch, dinner time, and then before bed. It's going to look at your thyroid function, your vitamin D, which is essential for boosting the immune system, and then your insulin, hemoglobin, A1C. So it's very, very important. But it's also going to look at your omega-6s to your omega-3s. 
You have high level high levels of omega sixes. It's a really good chance that you're dealing with a lot of inflammation in your body that needs to be rebalanced. It's not difficult, but it needs to be rebalanced, right? And if you think that you're getting, if you think you have a great diet, well, you need to put that to the test, literally, and find out. Then we're going to look at heavy metals, your mineral levels, your electrolytes, protein absorption. Uh, we'll look at your overall gut function, mitochondrial function. We just talked about that, um, and, and your, all of your B vitamins, etc. So. Really, what we're looking at, and we'll look at your food sensitivities as well, because if you're eating foods that are healthy foods, but yet they're causing inflammation because you're having a delayed IgG reaction, we need to know about those. Okay, so then what we're going to do is we're going to replace any deficiencies, your B vitamins, vitamin C, vitamin D, help with cortisol, whatever it might be, okay? And then we're going to remove a lot of these deficiencies. If you're high in aluminum and higher mercury, we need to bring those down. So if you're high in omega-6s, we need to bring those down. So that, that's pretty straightforward. There are protocols for all of these. So... What you want to do is you want to look at the big five if possible. If not, if that's kind of out of budget range, then you're going to run what's called the starter kit. And that'll look at your gut function. It'll look at, again, the mitochondria, all of your vitamin levels, all your mineral levels, your heavy metals. It's a great second best. So the thing is, all of these come with a consultation because I can't tell you exactly what to do today. I can give you the format, but you need to figure out how to customize this for you, right? I mean, that that's a thing. Anybody who says, oh, this is exactly what you do for long hauler syndrome, uh, doesn't really know. The truth is nobody really knows because they don't know what your unique deficiencies and toxicities are. So we can give you a general plan. A general plan is good, right? But it's not necessarily customized for you. So conventional medicine wants you to believe that everything happens because of like genetics or one particular thing. Well, that's not, that's not, not even close to the truth, right? Genetics just shows you what you're going to, what's going to happen to your body if your body becomes imbalanced, but it's not a definite, right? If your body's balanced, it's not going to happen. I had rheumatoid arthritis. I had Addison's disease. I had myalgic encephalomyelitis. I had type two diabetes. I had insomnia. I had massive debilitating allergies. I don't have any of those anymore, zero, and I'm older, right? So I had them at 17. Why don't I have them 25 years later? Why don't I have them? Well, I have the same genetics, same exact genetics, but what I've done is I figured out what my underlying root causes were. This is many years ago now, and I fixed those, and then lo and behold, there is no disease. Well, there's no disease because there's no underlying imbalance. And if there's no underlying balance, then the expression of those poor genes can't express themselves, right? So that's really what we're looking for in terms of the um, post-COVID inflammatory syndrome or the long hauler syndrome. What are your imbalances right now? You need to fix those. That, that really is the bottom line. So that's when you begin to then use the de-stress protocol that I literally teach you for free inside of my book, The Rain Barrel Effect. It is literally free. You pay for the shipping. I pay to print the book. There is no profit at all made, and any profit is 100% of it is donated to charity. I just need to get this information out there. We're very fortunate that we have a lot of practitioners that are teaching this. I'm fortunate that people listen to the podcast, but I need more people to know this information. So we're just trying to get that out there as much as possible. So then you're following the de-stress protocol. You run your labs. You can customize a protocol. You're going to be working with uh, a local naturopathic doctor that you know. You're going to be working with a virtual integrative health practitioner level two. You're going to be working with our team at Equal Life. You choose. Like literally whatever works best for you, you choose. You can find the labs at, at uh, stephencabral.com forward slash big five, the number five, or stephencabral.com forward slash starter dash kit, and you'll find the starter kit. Okay, so we're going to get the the... We're going to learn that. You'll get a customized protocol. You don't need to know how to do anything. They will teach you how to do it on your consultation, right? You should always be able to get that with your labs. And then in terms of your exercise, I taught that before. So I'm going to link up that podcast at stephencabral.com forward slash 2148. How to work back slowly with your exercise protocol because you're going to have to implement what we teach, which is a graduated exercise protocol. Now, I know that you might want to jump right back into it, but your mitochondria aren't there. Your body's not ready yet. So you have to use the crawl, walk, run, sprint you know, analogy that we teach. And we share with you how to work that up so that you don't overexhaust your body. You need to build back up and you can do this, right? 12 to 16 weeks for most people. And it might seem like, oh, that's a long time. Sure. It might seem that way, but then you're better. Like that's the thing is that there's no shortcuts. If you want a shortcut, we are definitely not the people that are going to help you with that. That's for sure. Because we want you to actually be better than you were before. 
So better in that 12 to 16 weeks, but then another 12 to 16 weeks after that, better than you were before. Meaning that you don't have to believe that since you're getting older, you should be slowing down. I don't want that for anyone. Not, not in our practice, that's for sure. So a couple other tips though. Cut out the alcohol for right now. It's only going to be an immunosuppressant. You're only going to cause more inflammation. You're only going to dysregulate your hormones and blood sugar to a greater degree. No alcohol until better. Uh, again, you can choose. I'm just giving you my best advice. If you're going to have alcohol, then once a week uh, maximum. One cheat meal or flex meal per week. That's it. So if you love desserts, if you love cookies, if you love bread and all that jazz, try to have those just once per week because it's going to cause inflammation. So again, our job is just to get you well. Like that's the thing. And then you can go back to having those things if you choose to, okay? Using the de-stress protocol. Again, I've shared that before. Uh, that's in my book, The Rain Barrel Effect. I've got, also got many free podcasts on this. All the podcasts are at stephencabral.com forward slash podcasts. And here's the bottom line. You can do this. You really can. It is about removing those toxicities, whatever they are. And then you're going to start to build the body up by replacing the deficiencies, your B vitamins, your vitamin C, your zinc, your vitamin D, using an adrenal energy support if needed using whatever shows up on your labs in order to customize this for your body. Your body is unique. So why not customize a plan for you? And again, just don't let anybody tell you that there's no answer to this. Don't let anybody tell you that, oh, conventional medicine doesn't know. And it could be years before we figure this out. No, it's not a mystery. We've seen this before. Myalgic encephalomyelitis, chronic fatigue syndrome caused by other viruses. This is no different. It's a different virus, but the same outcome. So here's the thing. If we can help in any way, just let me know. Comment below on YouTube in this video. Comment below on Instagram email us. Uh, however we can help, you let us know. We'll point you in the right direction. And of course, please do feel free to share this show with anyone you believe it could serve. Take care, everyone. 